So welcome back, friends of G&K. It's Monday, April 14th. We're coming to you live from the field, actually from the pickup truck. But we're out looking at some wheat fields. We've had a lot of phone calls asking about what's my next steps in wheat? Why does my wheat not look so hot? When should I top dress or maybe my second application to end? So we're out here kind of assessing the wheat crop a little bit, try to gauge that a little bit, try to make the best of it. That's the job. Getting a lot of questions, a lot of calls about why is my wheat kind of going backwards and why is it not looking so great? And if you notice, there's a lot of wheat out here that has these purpling tips. And if you get the sun right or the light right, it looks worse depending on how you're, what angle you're looking at it. A lot of that is symptomology from 22 degrees we had the other night which isn't the greatest on a wheat crop, especially after it's broken dormancy and it's kind of getting going. I'm really just trying to see how far along we are in growth stages to see if we're near joint or not. Now, this wheat is like a Feex 4. So it's full tiller. I mean, the tillers are have come on and now it's gonna start to elongate. And then after you get to a certain point, that's when it creates the first joint in the stem. And that's a critical point for wheat. Jointing is a critical time in terms of timing herbicides and fungicides and things like that. But we're pretty early on a wheat crop like this. Not to say that you don't have jointed wheat because somebody watching this, you very well could. So a lot of those are very key in terms of making decisions on when do I apply what or what do I apply together. But, uh, this one has a little ways to go yet before we're gonna be in here next. More importantly, what we're out here trying to assess is, is you know, why do we kind of look a little bit backwards from a week or so ago? Well, a lot of it's because of that, that cold night and it kind of nu nuked us a little bit. And again, that's why I said, that's what this purpling will do. When you get a little frost like that, that's a little bit of frost response and it will start to accumulate sugars and It'll go backwards a bit. Now, if we get some 60s here, like we're into today, and a lot of wind, but 60s, and if we can get 70, it will start to kind of turn the corner and revert. And it's kind of the ugly duckling right now as a result of that. So we just got to kind of get past that stage. When do we make herbicide applications? Uh, when do we make an early fungicide and even a growth regulator pass? So. To be honest with you, I like herbicide going on at this time stage right now where we're, we're not jointed, but we're kind of starting to elongate the stem. That's a prime time for herbicide if it needs to happen. If you sprayed herbicide in the fall, most cases those are really clean and we really don't even need a herbicide. So in a perfect world, I know wheat's not worth a lot, but it's about doing things right. I prefer the herbicide to go on young and I like the growth regulator, fungicide and insecticide to go on after first joint. That's the best timing. You'll get the best efficacy out of each of those products. Now, I realize that requires another pass, which nobody wants to make. And we're trying to get bean burn down done and think about getting planters rolling here. So it's just another step in the process, but in a perfect world, that's the best. If you want to incorporate them in one pass, that's okay, but we have to be, uh, you're trying to kill two birds with one stone, which isn't always the best scenario, but if we're going to do that, you got to be doing it pretty much as soon as we joint, make first joint, which based on weather conditions and heat units and growth of this wheat, my expectations is going to be early next week to be at first joint. So just something to think about there. Now see, this looks a lot better. But I don't know. I think it's, we've been so cool. I'm not really impressed with how this wheat has advanced compared to how I thought it broke dormancy. But it was really warm there for a few days and then we went back to cold and I think it just, it's like taking a one year old or two year old kid and subjecting them to a lot of harsh conditions and expecting them to, you know what it's actually really like? It's no different than our show pigs. You stress that young pig and it just sets it back and it takes a while to recover and hopefully they recover, but it just takes a while to kind of come back out of that. And that's where this wheat's really gone through. And it's kind of depends on how well it was tillered going into winter. 
the more tillers it had, the more robust it was. So it's like a, it's like the strong kid versus the weak kid. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what I think we're kind of dealing with right now on wheat, but I think it's salvageable. And that 22 degrees the other night didn't help us any. So we're just fighting through that right now and we'll get through it. But I think we get some 65, 70s and it'll, it'll turn the corner and it'll look the part. So the other thing I noticed, this farm right here, this wheat looks better, but these are higher exchange capacities and higher organic matter levels than where we just came from. So those lighter soil soils and lower OMs, it's just a tougher environment that wheat won't fight through that as well. I think it will come around, but it's gonna take a little bit. And that's why this doesn't look like the ugly duckling like where we just came from. This wheat's okay. It may be not, it may not be as far along as I prefer, but again, it's only April 15th. And honestly, a lot of times, I don't even like the first pass in on till almost May. And we've actually already made our first pass because we were so warm early. I like early insecticide applications because they kind of fend off the risk of armyworm later. Not to mean that's a guarantee, but it's a good defense. But I also look for early season aphids that might be in wheat. I honestly haven't seen any aphids yet, not to mean that there aren't some somewhere, but an insecticide will really kind of take control of both of them. But aphids bring on what's called barley yellow dwarf, which is a disease in wheat. So if you can knock out aphids early and knock out the risk of armyworm later, it's just a good time to throw insecticide in when you're making a herbicide pass or a early fungicide coupled with a growth regulator. So it's just, you're driving through the field, it's a good time to do it, it's cheap to do, very effective. So we kind of went through the incubator and then back into the refrigerator. And that's gonna be a little tough to metabolize, but we'll get around that. It's gonna be fine. I like, the, I like what this looks like, we'll overcome it. So in summary, here's where we kind of land in terms of recs. If your nitrogen applications haven't been made yet, it's time to be getting them done especially with our major significant rain coming at the end of the week. I know it's windy, but we need to try to get that done Wednesday, Thursday-ish if possible. If you made a double application of the nitrogen, we're starting to turn people loose on their second app ahead of the upcoming rain. It's always best to try to time that with the rain if you can. On top of that, if you need to make a herbicide pass, and if you wanna get the best efficacy out of your products, I like herbicide going on now. The fungicide, insecticide, and growth regulator, if we're gonna run them after first joint. So most of this wheat's not gonna be till next week on that. So ideally, I'd like this week to play out. So with that, we appreciate you tuning in. Look for us in the next video. Hit the like and subscribe to this channel. Over and out. Does that sound right or does it sound like boosh?